and I'm Gray. I'm Joel. I'm Jamie. Without further ado, let's get going. Um, so before we get straight into the actual design, we want to kind of give an overview, and Blythe had a view into this, but I don't know if any of you guys have. Um, and so we want to give an overview of kind of this long process that took over a month, kind of two months, um, before we actually start designing anything. And so Joel is going to start telling you about what that looks like. Yeah, so like any process, it, it starts at the beginning, and getting familiar with the brand is, is how we started. We uh, conducted interviews. Uh, we may have even talked to some of you guys personally. We ended up talking to people that you um, lent us to, uh, telling, trying to get a perspective from the inside. And we also talked to people outside looking in to see see what they thought and what they were, uh, what the general feeling was of uh, ACR in the community. And then we also started uh, looking at the the landscape of the other local canine nonprofits in the area just to see who our comparators were. And then, um, then we took it to step two. So the second process was delving deeper. So with the information that we get from the first process, we were able to review and analyze our brand again. And from that, we were able to see, um, so basically what we tried to do was we were trying to look for a pattern, anything constantly popping up. So we tried to look for those, and we also tried to find their key insights, and then we moved on to the next process. Yeah, and so after we kind of gathered everything like this, uh, we really like stuck our feet into it um, and felt like we had an understanding and empathy for the organization. Um, we started to create a foundation for design. So we're calling this the brand brief. And in this brief, we did a few different things. We really tried to figure out what is the essence or the big why of the organization. And so we're calling it the core purpose statement. And then we, we were thinking about the organization as if it were a human being. So, Kind of how would they walk, how would they talk, how would, how would they think, you know? Um, and so we took some personality attributes and attributed them to the brand. And, and we also looked at who we think specifically we should target um, to further our brand and to further the organization and the impact that we're having. Um, and so here's the brand brief that you guys have in front of you. And there's a section for notes if you want to write anything down. Uh, feel free to mark all over it, it's yours. And Joel's going to introduce us into the first aspect of this. Yeah, so the core purpose is the reason that you guys put all your extra time into this awesome organization. It's why you uh, make the sacrifice that you do and why you try to uh, save as many dogs as you can. It's you exist to create these joyful relationships between dogs and humans. That seems to be the core reason why you guys and this organization exist. And that's kind of the foundation that we wanted to base all of our designs on and also the rest of our brief on. And then we started uh, delving into the personality that uh, Jamie will actually unpack some of those attributes that we found. So our attributes include caring, welcoming, honest, especially about honest. So with, um, as I was conducting interviews, I noticed that a lot of people are saying how much they like us because we're very honest in what we do, we treat our dogs nicely, and we also um, use our donations wisely. So from that, we chose to be honest. And then the sec next one is matchmaking. We try to find the um, right one for the dogs, but also we try to find right dogs for dogs for the owners as well. And lastly, we're communal. Uh, we're growing as a bigger community now. Um, during the interviews, I heard a lot of people saying we're like all different people coming together for one purpose, which is loving dogs. And then as we grow bigger um, as a community, we notice that it is necessary to um, target on two main audiences. Yeah, so the two audiences that we would like to target would be UGA students and local couples. Um, the UGA students, we feel that they may have a bond with a pet at home and companionship uh, at school might be lacking. So uh, we also thought that they're a younger demographic who's uh, willing to volunteer and might be open to fostering. Uh, also, UGA students uh, account for one-third of Athens' population, so uh, they also provide a high concentration in uh, word-of-mouth advertising as well as influence. So we thought that would be a great target audience, but also we provide some value for them, and the value is the emotional reward of being around or temporarily owning a dog without the financial burden. So then we moved on to local couples, and we thought that they would have a healthy home environment, uh, able to afford the needs of a pet, or potential donors, and um, would be willing to contribute to the ACR community. And the value that we bring to them is the luxury of having a tailored personal experience in adopting and fostering healthy dogs. And to grab our attention, 
of our audience. We studied our comparators so that we know how to, we understand and how to stand out among them. And by just looking at them, you can maybe notice some um, elements that are re being repeated, such as color of blue or images of dogs. So we really want to stand out from that, but also not just in the way how we look, we want to differentiate ourselves in how we, um, how we stand in Athens area. So from that, we came up with a positioning statement. Yeah, so, and by doing that, we're not saying any of those organizations are, are like our enemy or, or like competing against them because we're all trying to save dogs, right? Um, but we think it is important to differentiate ourselves. And so, really, we wanted to at a core level, not just at like a design visual level, we want to at a core level say, what makes us different in the way we do what we do? Um, and so, what we really found was that we don't have a physical space. That's something that Vlad told us from the get-go. And so, while, while that seemingly seems like it's something that's negative, where we don't have an office, we don't have a shelter, um, we wanted to actually see this positive and say, this is a really beautiful foster network. Um, and every dog goes through a home before they get adopted, which is really wonderful. It's not just they're in a shelter, but they actually had a loving, caring parent with them before they're entering into another home. So with that in mind, we came up with this position um, that we are the only local canine rescue where every dog has a home. And we really love that phrase, every dog has a home. And so we're even proposing that we could even use that as a tagline for the organization. And so to transition into the actual work, now that we have this foundation, um, we want to say, just like Britt said, we're going to present three uh, distinct different identities. And we would be so honored if you would like to choose one. And obviously, there's no pressure. Um, but we love all of them. We're a team. Yep. And so feel free to talk for or against anything. Uh, and without further ado, Joel is going to get us into the designs with option number one. Before you run into that part, Joel, do y'all have any questions about the documents in front of you? Does, is that resonating with y'all? Is there anything that seems maybe off base that doesn't seem like maybe one of your qualities or attributes? Because we obviously we want to stay true to what the company stands for or the organization stands for. And I have seen this before, so I'm defaulting to you guys mm -hmm. to see if you have any opinions or things in mind when you see it. I think it looks great. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. Mm -hmm. I'll take that feedback. <laughs> 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 so, like I said, I'm, my name is Joel. Uh, I'm going to present option one. And it's, uh, so, this is the brain identity that uh, once we broke up into our. our or once we separated out of our groups, we each uh, designed our own. So I wanted to uh, present this to you. Obviously the current logo that we're all familiar with. And um, there's actually a lot of these elements of the original logo that I was inspired by. So I separated the logo into uh, the three main elements. Obviously the organization name, the rescue cross symbol, and then the dog illustration. And uh, I ended up keeping many of these in my iteration, and again, the organization name in a circular form. I uh, reduced the size of the rescue cross, and then I also kept the dog illustration, but I ended up using a grown dog with a, uh, a profile to it. Uh, things that I decided to add were a gold seal outline, um, some accents, and then what I'm calling the doggy halo. And, uh, when you combine all of them together, it culminates in the uh, logo that I have presented for you guys. Where every dog has a home, which is the tagline that we're uh, working with off the brain brief. Now, uh, let me break down the color and typography that goes into this uh, brain identity. The typeface and color, uh, we heard a lot about um, this is almost a luxury brand as far as being able to, uh, or the uh, tailored process of actually being able to take home a uh, lifelong pet. So um, I thought luxury meant gold to me, and black, gold, and white is going to be the color palette that I chose to represent that. I thought that uh, it's a simple color palette, but it's also, I think, distinct and would definitely stand out amongst other comparators. I wanted to uh, use typefaces that were welcoming, even though um, the, uh, like I said, we might be a luxury brand, but I wanted to, to make sure that it's uh, conveyed that we're welcoming and caring and honest and the other attributes that we were 
trying to push forth on the uh, on the brand brief. So the uh, Patrick Hand uh, typeface, the Loop, uh, I think it's five, regular, and then um, for body text and documents and things of that nature, Roboto condensed. Uh, I picked these three in particular because they are uh, free to use, uh, license free uh, from Google Font, so there's no expense in uh, administering these to uh, the identity. Uh, these are some outlines uh, when you when you can only use one color. I just wanted to show what it would look like in in the different uh, forms. And building a logo isn't building a brand. So we want to see how the brand lives in the world, and we want to when we want to be recognizable. We want to show. Not only that we belong, but that we're all part of this this group. Once we are either fostering or we are forever parents, or however uh, we end up participating, donors, volunteers. So I created this new parent starter kit that um, I'm going to walk through each element, but I wanted to kind of show you how it all works together. And the whole thing should be an experience. The whole. Um, not only adopting, but then you take it home and, you, and you're you living with not only the brand, but also the, the new part of the family. So as we move through, I'm very excited about the bandana. I think this is a, a fun and unique way to show that you can either be rescued or uh, you're open for adoption, depending on how you fold the uh, handkerchief or bandana. And I think it matches, obviously, our color scheme. And I think it would be noticeable on nearly every pet. Uh, I will point out that there is a change in the typography for the Adopt Me and the Rescue. I thought it needed a call to action, something a little more, I guess, vibrant that doesn't necessarily for this particular application. But um, not to worry, that is also a, a free font as well. So. Um, these could be produced and we could see them around Athens um, at any time. T-shirts, everyone loves a t-shirt and a tote bag. No, uh, the, the tote bag uh, is more for housing the initial starter kit, but also um, great advertising when it's out and about and also kind of shows how you, you're all already part of this brand or part of this community. Um, the t-shirts, Everyone loves a t-shirt. Like I said, we decided to put a couple of um, kind of clever phrases on the back to kind of be conversation starters or get you to uh, wonder what, what the organization might be about. And then uh, the seal on the front to uh, show almost like a badge of honor, but also it's a uh, organization that is close to your heart. So I thought that that was kind of poignant. Not the most glamorous. <laughs> But uh, I think it's necessary to promote uh, good, healthy habits for dog ownership. And that's all that needs to be said about that one. <laughs> <laughs> now, dog food bags. Uh, Bly, when we, when we dis discussed our, had our first meeting, you said that um, sometimes you have to give dog food to uh, uh, um, those that uh, foster because you're basically picking up that, that uh, expense. And I was thinking, perhaps you could buy in bulk and then um, segment them into bags that could have your own branding on them. But what I was really excited about is maybe have feeding instructions or something that you could print out labels and stick them on the front, so that um, you know you might have a dog that has certain dietary needs, or you know a puppy and a, and a senior dog do not eat the same thing. So or even the amount of food that, that a dog gets. So I, I thought that it would be cool to take some pressure off you that you could do the work on the front end, and then by the time they get at home, they already know what they're doing. Now, again, like I said, building a brand, we want to build consistency and recognition. So when we're out and about, we want to know that Athens Canine Rescue is Athens Canine Rescue and not any other organization. So we have the adoption application that makes paperwork fun. Uh, the, there's nothing more that needs to be said about that. It's just you, you want to keep consistency through, throughout um, everywhere that you're going to have uh, interaction with uh, potential donors or volunteers. And 
everyone knows and loves a decal. Um, they're, they're all around Athens, um, and I think it's a great way to show your allegiance to, uh, to the brand and to the organization. Uh, donation jars that um, mimic where our, our color scheme and make sure that you know, so people know exactly where their money is going when they're donating. And then obviously social media is always a, a huge uh, part of getting the word out about uh, new dogs and events. And I wanted to uh, create these ads or um, kind of uh, posters to some degree of like the pop of the week. Um, but I wanted to also keep the golden uh, seal in the circular form around the dog head to kind of keep that consistency. And then obviously you can toggle through full size pictures of the dog so um, people can have a bit of an experience, but they also know that this is the pop of the week. Uh, again, this is the logo as it stands by itself. And uh, I would uh, welcome any questions if you have anything that's burning, but otherwise we can do a Q&A afterwards and have a discussion, but I'd love to hear your feedback if you have anything. I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. Steve, we are about to applications online. So yeah. Do you have any thoughts about, like, did you just show paper? Do you have yeah. thoughts how to put that online? No, well, I mean, I do have and a, an idea for online. I mean, we, we went through the process up until the point that we actually submitted just to kind of get a feel for it. And I actually loved the, the way the, the website is working and I felt that it was pretty clean and consistent. Um, obviously, we're building a brand identity, which I mean, obviously we would probably change color and just to make sure that it, it stays consistent. But I don't, I don't know if the online application needs to be jazzed up anymore in, in particular, but it's definitely something we could look into if, uh, if, if paper isn't, isn't something that you guys are doing anymore. Sure. Okay. And, yeah. When you uh, use the gold color on tote bags, clothing, etc., are you thinking of metallic gold or more of when it shows up like on the screen here? So, um, well, in, in print, I, I see it as, as this, but like you said, on the tote bag, I think that, um, yeah, having a little bit of sparkle or something like that would, would suffice if, if, it's, if it's financially available um, and, and doable for us. I mean, I, I, like, I like that it would have a little bit of sparkle to it, but um, again, it, I guess it all comes down to how much that would cost and, and how many we would be purchasing this year. Uh, we'll pass it off to Jamie, who's going to show option two. Hi, my name is Jamie, so I'm here to introduce the option two. Um, and thank you again for being here. So here's a new identity that I wanted to show you guys. And I know that I made a drastic change from the current logo, which is right here. So I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about the design process, the design process that I had. So going back to our core purpose statement and our brand brief, we emphasize on how we want to make a good, uh, bring a really um, good relationships between dogs and human. So I really focused on, focused on the relationship part. So when I thought about relationships, I started thinking um, puzzles, blocks coming together, and then the bricks coming together. Because I feel like we're a community, like all different people are coming together, all different age group coming together for one purpose. So from that, I chose a brick wall as a strong foundation. And then I started drawing lines, and then got the shape. And then I built from it, and then finalized with the logo that I have right now. And here's a vertical version with the um, tech line if it's applied and the horizontal version if it's necessary. And these are the sub marks. The sub marks are, may not be so necessary sometimes, but when you try to put it in an application system when it's really small, when you condense it down too much, you might lose the details of the logo. 
So in that case, you might want, and in that way, it's reduced, but it's still recognizable as that Athens Canine Rescue. Here's the colors. Since I made very drastic change from the current logo, I wanted to keep the regular, um, the current color that we have, which is the black, red, and white. And I think black and red combination will never grow old in Georgia, Athens especially, <laughs> so. Here's the typefaces. So the first one is Comfort, bold and regular. Um, so this is a typeface that was used in the, in the logo. And the reason why I chose this logo is because it kind of reflects back to how our logo itself looks like. Also the roundness and then the curvedness kind of gives the playfulness. So I think that's a good way to represent our group, our brand. And then secondary typeface is Times New Roman. And it is for legibility or if it's if it has to be used in a heavy text and it's gonna help help with the legibility. So moving on to the application systems, I just want to show you how these um, logos can just stand on its own and then you don't have to do too much work to make it work on an application system. So here's the example of the stationery. As you can see, there's envelope on applications, business card, and letterhead. And the letterhead can be um, also used as application for the dog, um, dog adopting process if you want to give it out at the um, pop-up events. Here's a close-up of the business card. This is actually my personal favorite, so that's why I'm showing you toys. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a brochure. I saw that you sent me a copy of your brochure, so I just wanted to let you know that just by using um, our logo and simple system, then you can create on a simple but nice-looking brochure. Maybe you can pass this out at, at an event or give it out at the Athens event. Here is the potential idea of the poster. Just keeping it consistent so when people see these kind of posters that they know it's us. Here's t-shirts designs. And the buttons, I think buttons are always cute and funny and then I'm just carrying them around. I feel like it'll be a self advertisement. And some people might be like, hey, that is a really cute button on your book bag. Where did you get it from? And then you start a conversation about how you got it. And bandanas. Um, I like the concept of folding it in half so it can be like vice versa. So one side, if the dog's wearing it, it can be just a ribbon. Or the other day, it can be side with the logo. Or I know a lot of people have. Um, the dentist tied around their book bags or purse, I think it's a great way of advertisement as well. And moving on to digital applications, I think digital applications are a must because since we don't have a physical place, I think a lot of people reach out to us through our website. So in that case, I think showing the consistency in our look is important. So I wanted our website to look very clean and simple and easy to navigate and as soon as you see the website um, you can kind of get the um, get the gist of who we are and then the top line top banner um, top part can be potentially a banner so you can replace it and then just put whatever it is important at the moment moving on to Instagram um, oh I sorry that I made a little mistake there I didn't know there was a blank space but anyways um, I think social media is very important, especially we're targeting towards younger audience, which is which are usually students. And I think it is important that we own our photo. So even though our photos get uh, reposted, that they would know that it's from our um, from our organization. And just decorating the photos not that hard. Just um, they're going to be like given given files that you can just place on on top of pictures of dogs, and you can decorate them. And then by just looking at the feed, it will stand out on its own. Moving on to the experiential design. Here's the first one, which is a name tag. And you might wonder, how is that experiential one? But I think when we have events like um, just gathering at the park or having a day out or mush shut, I think people really want to come together as a community and want to get to know each other. And I think it would be helpful if people just grab the name tag, write their names, and write their dog's name, and kind of get to know each other. Because I've been in a million conversations at events, and I end up forgetting the person's name that I'm talking to. It's really awkward, so avoid anything like that. <laughs> and the last ones are the photo walls. I think it would be really great at the event. Um, just taking a picture and then 
posting on Instagram, it would be a self advertisement after all. And I think it would be really good, great experience with your dogs. Yeah. And that is it for me. Thank you for listening to me. Do you have any questions at the moment? I love the photo. Yeah, I think oh, that is so, so cute. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's great. Um, if there's no more questions, we'll move on to Gray. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. All right, so I'm going to present option number three. And so, just like they did, I'm going to start out with just the building blocks, the elements of the brand. But first, to do that, um, I want to keep in mind these two things from the brief this tagline where every dog has a home, and also the core purpose uh, we exist to create joint relations between dogs and humans. Um, because in my designing process, these were two things I wanted to somehow communicate through a mark. Um, I wanted to somehow build these two ideas um, into the logo itself. So I started out with thinking about the home and the image of the home, and to the home for a dog and also for humans. Uh, so bringing those two pieces together, uh, so kind of <laughs> bringing, bringing that purpose and the tagline kind of into one. And so I started studying the shapes and trying to mirror both of them, and I really want to create this picture of togetherness. Um, of bringing out two pieces to make a whole um, and to create completion. And so I created this uh, mark that is a heart, um, but it also um, has those two images of two homes coming together to create a relationship of love and of joy. And so that would be the proposed logo. And then we also can't forget where we came from. <laughs> And so these are a couple different layouts that, that could be used when needed. So that top left would obviously be the primary. A top right, we would just shrink down the type and put it inside of the heart um, when there's not much space available. And then whenever a horizontal uh, layout is necessary, we could use that as well. And so the color scheme, I wanted to lead with the red, um, which is something that ACR has always done. And I really wanted to keep that red because obviously if this was adopted, it's a very different looking thing. And so I wanted to keep that red as, so we keep the equity there. Um, and then using the blue, the gold, and the cream as accent colors. And then for typography, um, the typeface that you saw in the logo is that sharp slab, extra bold. And just a disclaimer, unlike Joel and Jamie, unfortunately these are not totally free typefaces. They're still on the somewhat cheaper end um, at about $50 a piece. So if, that, if this is something that isn't realistic, then there are also backup typefaces that are free that are also options. And so <clears throat> using that slab serif and leading with that, but also having this accent typeface called center number two, um, this sans serif that is very versatile, um, and having that bolder one as a, a secondary display or a subheader, and then having the book as a legible body, long body copy type. And then as the last brand element I'm introducing, I would, I would just think about photography styles and how is photography, you know, photography going to live out this brand? Because we would love for someone to look at an image and think ACR off of that. And so thinking about more informational uh, photo, photos, um, we introduced full color and warm, like a very inviting type of feeling photo. And then for a more decorative, like graphic element type photo, we introduced this duo tone with some of the brand colors that Layered over. And so just as I said, um, we were really thinking about a brand not just as a logo, but as this kind of living and breathing and moving thing. So thinking about how it's going to live out into all these other um, spheres that it inevitably is. And so I first was thinking about a website. And thinking, since we don't have a physical space, the primary place that people interact with us is through our website. And so I kept all of the information um, on the home page and just tried to condense it down. So moving some things into drop downs, uh, just to simplify and condense. So it's more a, a little bit more of a welcoming thing. Um, and then creating one uh, specific call to action to look at the adopters. And obviously Instagram. Uh, being a college student, I know how prevalent it is and how it's, whether you like it or not, a primary way that college students uh, communicate, and so you see in the top left for the first time the mark standing by itself, um, which 
we think that maybe you could gain enough recognizability to do that, um, especially if someone's already following us. And then you see kind of how some of the photography styles are playing out, where we have these warmer uh, images of the dogs, and then kind of these pup of the week uh, templates that we could use the duotone style with. And uh, well, I also mentioned that you do a lot of newspaper ads for your pups of the week and for the dogs that you're trying to get adopted, maybe for ones that you have for a while. And so this is just an example of how that could potentially live up. And then for print suite, obviously we got to have business cards and then a letterhead. And the notebook would be something that you could give to each person that adopts a dog. And they could just use it as one, a way to keep, keep in mind ACR, but also a way to write down memories and keep records of anything that they do with, through their relationship with the dog. And how to create some cool stuff for the dog, right? Uh, so these would be um, customizable uh, dog collars that could actually be won by people that adopt dogs, which I'll get to in a second. And I created a, a line of a small line of t-shirts that uh, really hopefully would appeal to men and women, because we know that right now you guys appeal to primarily women. And so I was hoping that we could create some designs and a brand that would live for both and that would be attractive to both. And so hopefully we have some shirts that would make sense for, for both guys and girls to wear. And so this would be more of an experience um, and how a brand would live out to create an experience for somebody. And so this is what I'm calling the Atkins Activity Guide where there's 12 different uh, activities for you to go and do with your dog. And so you give, give this to someone when they adopt a dog, and you have the next year of fun things planned out for them all around town. And so you'd see, what do you do there? Why would you go with your dog? Um, would it be fun? <laughs> and then after they complete all of the activities, they would then email a selfie at every location with their dog, um, to you guys, and they would get the ACR prize pack, which would be one of the t-shirts, one of the customized dog collars, and a donated uh, gift card to a local restaurant. And <clears throat> I know that y'all's two biggest events are the 5K and the Munstra, and those are huge. And so we really wanted to think about like how can we create a consistency within the brand um, for the event. So not just it's an event, but it's an extension of ACR. And so you'll see the logo is actually used here. Um, it's repeated to create patterns. Uh, so we have this heart pattern used to create a specific identity for Munstra. You see how that lives out on Facebook. We did the same thing for the Run Your Tail Off 5K. How the, the logo shape is split up here uh, to create that specific Run Your Tail Off pattern. And while you're at these events, or while you're in town somewhere, I don't know. Never really heard if you guys do um, Indie South Fair or Athfest or anything like that. But <clears throat> there's so many opportunities here in town um, to get your name out there and to set up a booth somewhere. And so really just thinking how can we create a mobile identity element um, that can just be put up anywhere. And so thought about this banner um, would be a good idea to do that. And last but not least, since I've started working on this, all the time I have seen the ACR logo on the back of cars. And so I have to toss this in there. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And to review, here are all three. And we would love to open up a discussion um, with you guys about your thoughts and about any questions that you have. Did you guys look into the pricing for any of the merchandise options that you brought up? Do you know how that will compare to the things that we're currently using? Sure. So you could, at least for my t-shirts, they can be printed on really anything. Um, so if you have a current um, t-shirt supplier that you're using, um, I'm sure you can continue to use them and you just need the different designs and then you have the new designs. How about the business cards and what pricing things like that? So yeah, similar similar to that, you can go with really expensive options or you can go with cheaper options and it's just usually quality of the material. Okay. Um, so if you want a really nice paper, that would be a lot more expensive than... So just putting the same design on whatever right. product you're using. If, if that works for you. Of the week, 
picture, you know, in a smaller part. Sure. Which isn't something that I have been doing, but I do like the way that it looks. Do you have a suggestion for me on what program you use to kind of create that, or what something that I yeah. use to kind of replicate that when I'm making my program? Uh, sure. Uh, well, I, I used Illustrator for for what for the, the mock-up that I did, but okay. um, but yeah, we could we could create something where it would be just an overlay if you wanted to do that, and then we would we would have basically a background that was see through for the photo, mm -hmm. and then um, we could uh, then you would have the text be adjustable. So um, I could send you a file. I don't know. Do you work in Illustrator at all, or do you have Photoshop or any of the Adobe products, or because if not, then I, yeah, they, they are expensive. They are kind of expensive. So. Um, well, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's something that I would have to look into. Yes. But um, I, I, I could. I'm sure there's a way that we could okay. create a template that that was workable for you guys. Okay. That's the problem. So you mentioned changing the styles of the photography that we use, and I really liked the warmer photos that you were showing. Yeah. Is that something that we can just do in editing photos? Because yeah. our photography is all done by volunteers who sure. have varying levels of experience. Sure. So have a nice yeah. So, how yeah, much do we need to change that? <laughs> right. I'm going to take pictures, I, but I'm not a photographer. Right. So, so, so yeah. what all would need to change to have photos like we have? So, I mean, ideally, you want professionally done photos, right. but if that's not an option, which usually it's not, mm -hmm. um, you can actually, whatever program you use, you can, you, most programs, I don't know, Lightroom is kind of the industry standard, but whatever programs you use, you can usually toss in a preset. And so, so it'll edit each photo that you put it on to the same like look. Okay. And so that would be my recommendation for how to do that, how to keep a consistent look, is to always use your preset. It's like a professional Instagram filter. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Right. It's it's preset is a fancy word for filter. Yeah. Um, I really liked the idea of what sounded like a scrapbook or a baby book for a new adopted dog, and what you were sending out. I actually send out in my Congratulations on your adoption email. A lot of information about places and Athens for them to go. And that sounds like a really nice way to just include it in a little yeah. package that we get to people and a way to keep them involved and keep them coming back totally. to ACR, yeah. which really helps us spread our group around Athens even mm -hmm. more. So I thought that was great. Yeah. I have more like, I like everything you all have. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about the fonts that. Um, that you have to pay for a license. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have a shelter, we don't have a specific place for everyone to go to right. to create the letterheads or, or anything. Right. I probably do the majority of that mm -hmm. of um, flyer type ideas. It because we've we've never bought a font before. Right. Is that transferable if we were to purchase the font that I could then somehow they can all also use it? So for this specific one, um, in their user agreement, it actually says we're up to three desktops okay. under one license. Okay. Um, so if you bought it for the organization, you could use it on up to three different computers. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and one of the things that you would have to be careful with is um, when you create something that you then send to, send to a printer, sometimes, depending on how the file gets created, you have to send them the font. Right. That's legal, though. Yeah, you can always send a partner the typeface. Right. We would just re need to understand. Right. A right. lot of our volunteers yeah. wouldn't know that if you don't save the file a certain way, it doesn't right. send. Sure. So then they open right. the yeah. Word document, and all of a sudden, you don't, you don't have a font. It got right. lost. Yeah, so it's more yeah. of a process thing yeah. right. that yeah. we would need to make sure everybody understood. Because yeah. I've been part of that. <laughs> <laughs> Where I've gotten in on things, this just looks like Times New Roman. Yeah. Nothing right. special. Because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't send you the font. So. Yeah. About the decorated photos, um, okay. the little love thread. Do men respond to that as much as women do? Sorry? Do men respond to the decorated photos as much as women do? Um, I feel like if you are a dog lover, you'll be attracted to any cute photos of dogs, and I think just having decorated pieces will not be distracting, but it's just a way of showing off our dolls. Mm -hmm. And I think anyone would love it, to be honest. Yeah. Talk about the male hair. Oh, uh, the male hair? Oh, yeah. Also, had the male hair version, so um, the other photo that I didn't zoom up, it actually had a male hair on the dog, so I think that's actually, I think that's communicatable to me on this as well. As y'all see these three potential options, um, I encourage y'all to think through, rather than thinking through, y'all are basically asking great questions and making comments about how usable the system is, and that's certainly 
part of how you select something, but also thinking through the lens of those audiences and thinking about, well, how is this going to appeal to these particular types of folks that we're really targeting? So I don't know if there's a favorite or if there's one that's resonating with y'all more than the other, or if any of these are potentially viable for the organization. But as you consider that, just think about the elements on that page in front of you. Which one of these feels like the, the core purpose that we have? Or which one of these do we think will stand out of the crowd the most? And which one of these are the most recognizable or have the most meaning or would appeal to our audiences the most? Because I'd love to get into a conversation to hear if any of these are viable for the organization. I think that's a really good question for Melissa. Um, she interacts so much with our social media, which is where we're getting the feedback from the public that we deal with. Um, it is targeted, at, like as you said, towards the students and the and the younger couples that live in town. Um, but I do know that we also have a lot of people that are much older than that that continue to follow us and interact as well. So I think it's a good question for Melissa how she thinks that might impact our interaction. I, I, I've been looking at these three logos and I love all three of them. It, it, my first thought was I really like the first one because it's so, it, it, it has a lot of familiar feelings. Like sure, yeah, it's evolutionary it. from, from your logo. But the more and more I look at it and think of it and think of our college student base, bases and our younger bases, You, you know, you have the heart, the reflection, the four rays, the arch. Like it, it ties in a lot of things that I can see people liking. Like you, you deal a lot with the people, like I do, like giving feedback to your readers or your thoughts on it. Like, what do you see the people that you deal with day to day liking? So it's funny that you're saying that they're like for younger audiences because I'm the youngest person, and I really like. I mean, I like all three of them a lot, and the one on the left is. Like, I keep looking at it, and I know I'm, like, sitting back on the across from it. But I I like it because it's still, like, I mean, like everyone's saying, it pulls in elements of our older logo, so it's still recognizable to everyone who currently knows us. They won't be quite so jarred by changing the logo, but it still brings in new elements. I think that it would look nice. I mean, I think it would all look nice on any of the merchandise we sell, and, you know, you can recognize them on a car, on the sticker, on the back, on or, you know, kids in school put it on their water bottles and on their laptops, and that sort of stuff can go really well. Um, how, how do you guys think that our, our supporters mm -hmm. would feel if we change the logo and change the branding? It, I mean, it's been the logo for a very long yeah. time, but our audience changes a lot too. So yeah. do you think, like you're saying, it would be jarring. Like, do you think that it would cause a, like, Oh I don't think that it would. I think a lot of companies rebrand and do well in not only keeping their current audience but expanding even further past that audience. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, like you were saying, thinking about the audience that we're looking to expand more into right. and then choosing something that will fit them as well as, like you were saying, our older groups. Like, we have plenty of people who apply to adopt from us that are in their 60s. Yeah. And we want to keep them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think they're all very attractive logos. I have a question for you yeah. while I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, like in putting any of these items into practice for our program, do we have to choose one thing and go with that? Or can we take a little from here and a little from there? And kind of I think over and above, these systems are each complete packages. Mm -hmm. But I think there are certain things that if you really like an Instagram post from one of them and you would love to see how that's translated, that idea is translated through the next, that could work. Mm -hmm. I don't know if like pulling the gold from one, the red, some, th some of the things probably wouldn't merge well together. So I think it just depends. Um, but I think to follow up what you were saying, there's a story that you can tell when you change a brand. We like to think about it as launching a new brand, a rollout of the new brand. And I think there's certainly a message around Athens Canine Rescue is growing up, and we want it to grow up. We want it to grow up our look with that, or um, we're expanding, or we're launching something new. And along with that, we want to we want to re you know rethink about our visuals. 
or we went at, we went through a rebranding exercise, as you mentioned, many companies do that and roll out their new brands. So I think there's certainly a way to think about packaging that message and communicating to your existing audiences why this change happened. Um, I think that's really all I wanted to say. I think we've been working our way up to that slowly. Very recently, I mean, redoing our website, which we did recently, mm -hmm. and then launching like the bandanas and bow ties campaign and that fundraiser. We're we've sort of been working our way towards yeah. a change. And I mean, I've been. I don't. It wasn't intentional, but where I've been kind of separating the logo a little bit for the months and the seasons, and just having fun with that. Yeah, I've yeah. just been having fun decorating the logo for the months. Such a good job with those. <laughs> so I mean. It, it, at least my Facebook audience is used to seeing me change things yeah, up yeah. every so often, so I don't so, think it would be super drastic to adopt something new. So I, I'm having an I don't know if it's an emotional reaction or just a reaction that I mm -hmm. wanted to ask you guys about. The I really like the first one probably because I'm old enough that I hate change. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am totally okay with it. Totally okay with it. Um, my concern is, when, it, it, it hit me even harder when I saw the bandanas. Like, my first thought was, you, if we put one of those bandanas on one of our dogs, you'd lose an Indian. Like, because it's brown and black. And, mm -hmm. and gold. You would pick a, you could pick gold for the dark dogs and the black. Yeah, would it, would it, would it, would it, I mean, you guys have one more experience. With yeah, the, but I, I can speak to at least the printing costs. Yeah. yeah. Using gold will be much, yeah. much more yeah. expensive. Yeah. Yeah. That if we were doing something like a t shirt that we're selling, so we want to increase the cost, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But if it was something that we're just putting on our adoptable dogs that we yeah. have white, lost, what if we did white instead of gold? I oh, think white would not uh, work with dirt dogs. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, when so, that was a bandana, you were thinking more for dogs that had been adopted all the way. It was two sided. It was two sided. Oh, so, okay. so, yeah. It, you're side. either rescued or, uh, or uh, adopting. So, and I was so worried be, I, because I do the t shirt. So I was worried about the, the and, cost of the color yeah. as well. And I, I think on most dogs it would be fine. A, a black dog, the, the font will stand out because okay. that's the gold color. But if it's a brown dog, then you're still going to pick up the black aspect of it. So I think it would, okay. it would stand out. Um, so a couple of my thoughts. I do love the red and black because, you know, keep, because it is – it's been our colors for so long mm -hmm. that I'm just used to seeing red, red in the logo. So I do love that. Um, what I love the absolute most out of everything is the where every dog has a home. Like, mm -hmm. I think that is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Um, we have a mission statement, you know, that kind of thing, but we don't have any kind of tagline mm -hmm. like that. Um, the original logo has please spay and neuter. Mm -hmm. I'm just used to seeing it, so I don't even think about the fact that it's talking about staying and neutering, which is <laughs> extremely important, by the way. <laughs> but, um, putting that in huge letters on your back is not the most wonderful thing that people want to tote around. Especially when it bites. So, yeah. So, uh, I, you know, I, I, I have zero issues getting away from, you know, the police stay and neuter, and I love the where every dog has a home. Yeah. Um, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of different places where you can use it for fostering and we can use yeah. it for adoptions. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think this positioning is the most fantastic way for foster like to get people right. to differentiate yeah. ourselves and yeah. fostering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More into that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> my thoughts are I, I love the red and black. The the heart aspect is a good aspect, but I feel like it could be polarizing between you know different demographics. Sure. So I think I mean what we do is so emotional and heart based anyway that it works because mm -hmm. of that, but it also keeps it in that emotional state, sure. which is not a bad thing. I'm just talking out loud. The middle logo to me does the opposite. It takes it takes that out, but it it really pops and it it's it comes across 
not in the movie. First of all, I <laughs> refuse to use social media. Like, I have never used it once because I hate it. And so that's why I defer to everyone else. So it looks much, much more modern, and um, and I like that about it. Yeah. Um, I can see that it wouldn't resonate with our older audience, mm -hmm. but I don't think anybody is invested specifically in the logo of a rescue that they're supporting. So, you know, I don't think it would do anything to where it would polarize anybody like that. I think having this small amount of red is really nice that it makes it pop. I would like that you can take those elements and put them in the Instagram photos and you can do a bunch of stuff with those small things. I do like that a lot. Um, and the first logo, I both like it and don't like it because it resonates with me as our same logo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I don't know how to... If, if you're going to yeah. change, is it a tough change? Yeah. yeah. But is it is it a, the best change because it's not so crazy? So yeah. I don't know. That's that's I can't decide on that. Um, so that, that's a lot of thought. I mean, people yeah. always like a massive stuff on social media anymore. I mean, if we wanted to put it up for a poll or a vote or something, that is something we. I could. will not allow the public to see. Smartly. Now, do can we ask their opinions? Absolutely, but I'm not going to let them yeah. confirm. <laughs> we'll either confirm or deny or do the conversation. Yes. yes. So it really sounds like all three are resonating kind of across the mm -hmm. row there. And it doesn't really seem like there is one that is resonating above and beyond any of the others. It really sounds like some equal commentary that we're hearing. Um, is there anyone that ha that feels very passionately that one is perhaps not right? Um, or are we all just kind of equally torn? And we, we can take it. We put a lot of time and effort into this, but it doesn't make it a bad mark if it's just not working for you guys. You know? So we're, we're, we came here to hear feedback and to hear your honest opinions about things. And so if you like one over another, it's not going to hurt. Personally, adore number one. If I could make two changes, sure. <laughs> one I think going back to the red would be nice, but I understand the goal. Mm -hmm. um, but for costs and like our other issues, like or the other thing down there, mm -hmm. would, I think I don't know if you it would lose something in red, but we'd also have more familiarity. But I love that it's familiar. And then my my other concern is that the dog in it. I love the profile. Mm -hmm. That is a pure red. German short hair pointer. <laughs> yeah, but our old logo is pure red domination. I just, it seems more elevated. Like, I, I would be afraid it would turn off people who are okay. into butts. Like, yeah, I love the old one. The puppies I didn't think that was a red domination. I was just like, that's a cartoon. I thought it was yeah. like a mix. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, I thought it was like a pointer. It's, it, it, it's definitely a domination. Um, but I think it's just easier on what she's saying because it's cartoonish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't right. feel like you're looking at it all. This right. one just makes me think this is a pointer rescue and I know like some of the more lab rescues yeah. we have a very clear lab and it can be off-putting um, or it can just give it it's a different thing where off first look, yeah. yeah. We can do mutts. Yeah. It would be nicer to make mutt or less or more mutt like. Yeah. <laughs> or how <laughs> the lab mix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's what we really have. Do we need a very specific person here? <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with that. Um, I think it's a great person. I love it. Otherwise, I love it. I think it. we could actually, like, we won't have to change all of our stuff at once, yeah. which would be a huge concern with cost. But I think it would be great. No, it's it's so blend you can blend things in. Yeah. Um, and I would have to change the website again myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thinking of actually using some of this stuff moving forward, and if the logo would be changed, maybe this is a question for you. Mm -hmm. As far as giving the students credit for the work that they've done, and for us using it forward, is there anything that we would have to continue to provide to your class or the students, or if we would start to implement this stuff, we would the brand then go forward to? Yeah. So the next and final step for this course is for them to get feedback. So if y'all said. 
we are torn between all three. If number one could have red in it, and number three could change this, and number two could change this, we'd love to see that to help us make our final decision. They have one kind of round of edits left, and that's just putting into practice client feedback to finalize work. I think from there, um, the, the step would be to choose one and then for the students to release the files as is. And then I think any additional help or work that y'all would need would be outside of my ears and outside of the walls of UGA. That would be a professional relationship beginning. Um, but for the sake of the course and the credit, I think some feedback today and then y'all getting an updated round is absolutely part of, of this class. So we do give food to our adopters yeah. to get them started, okay. and mm -hmm. that would be a good way yeah. to yeah. do it. The fosters just get their own bag of food. Right. 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 So, so, so I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. That would be fun for you. But only, yeah, yeah, that would be nice. That yeah. way, you know. And I don't have the instructions on the report. We normally we just would write it on paper, paper. Yeah. but having it on the bag as well, and then it's just right there when they're eating. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really, this is going to sound so I really like the food bag dispensers. Oh, I, those were great. <laughs> I, give, I make sure that every foster has one on their harness lead. Yeah, I hand yeah, them yeah, out yes. at events. I mean, and that's something, I don't know if you guys have dogs, but you get new poop bags and you put them in your dispenser and you keep the dispenser until it breaks and dies. So that's another way for people to just see our logo somewhere related to a dog. And the more places we can put a logo, as long as it's not expensive to implement, the better that is. Yeah. Um, River Crest is a. Uh, yeah, they're not bad because we just they're somewhere in town that we've donated a lot of them to us. The water, the water business. I've got the last few that are torn now. God bless them. The water business always is. Yeah. And then it works in their favor. Currently, do is like stickers and buttons, and that is something a lot of the younger students suffer carrying around. So that was students put stickers on freaking everything. Yeah. And now correct me if I'm wrong. The primary reason we haven't done that is, is just storage, right? Just somebody's got to keep them. Uh, it is storage, and some of it is, you know, we've had, you know, stickers before that nobody wants, and it's it's changing. Like that's yeah. the thing; the audience is changing. As we change, and so yeah, so we have to update what we're offering yeah. to to fit the needs that they kind of want to know. Yeah. So. I, I do want to take the buttons and the stickers are going to be yeah. bigger now than what they need for it. And it's really, you know, when people want something for their car, they want a magnet mm -hmm. because they can move that and it's not going to be permanent on their car. They don't have to worry about scraping it off. But it's also easier to convince somebody to put something on their water bottle sure. than to put it on their mm -hmm. car. Yeah. I think they're all great items. Yeah. yeah. But I think the stickers, especially, are the most variable. Yeah. So. I think I think my favorite logo is the second logo. I, I think that the aspects of it just visually look good to me, and mm -hmm. it, it's very transitional to be able to be used in a bunch of different ways. To me, um, I like the shirt that we are talking about making a fundraiser. <laughs> towards the end, or in a couple of weeks or something, it, it very similarly has the shape of the dog in it, which reminded me of it. Um, but Maybe it, the, the one from fall or the one, the one that we pushed? Oh, yeah, the fall. Okay. Yeah. So I, it is so different. Yeah. Um, and that might be why I like it. Um, but I, that, that one, that, to me, stands out as my favorite. But I understand the, the positive qualities of every single one of them. Do you guys think that, are there any specific pieces of feedback you would give to any of the three systems that you want to see in order to make a final decision? Or do y'all think y'all just want to talk it out and let us know if there's one that y'all can all be on the same page about? 
Could you create a version of, of your logo with red? And a button. <laughs> uh, the the dog is hand drawn, so uh, oh, I, I, I mean I I, I can it adjust it. But, but I mean it it, 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 it can be done, but um, I, I, I can give it a shot. Uh, no, I ha I have a button, so maybe I'll just draw my dog. Yeah, do it. Yeah, you would you would be surprised how often we do that. <laughs> what if what if it was something where you could try it with red with the same dog, and if it still resonated as heavily with everyone? And we talked to the rest I of the board, then, over it. then we could come <laughs> to you and, and, and so, discuss yeah. what it would take. Sure, I mean, I, I, I have no problem showing you what it would look like in red. That's, I, like I said, I, I made these, or made this for you guys, and so that, that's that's the whole point. So if, uh, but it, there are some things in the system that may have to be changed because it doesn't work. Because sure. It was built on flat rate. Right, mm -hmm. right. Okay, so we've got those two pieces of feedback, potentially a dog change and a red for option one. Any changes for option two? We can we can twirl back through the work if we need to 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 yeah, rejog your memory. Yeah. yeah, we can go through the whole presentation again. Yeah, I was actually we have about fifteen more minutes. Yeah, Michigan gold's fine, but UGA and gold. Yeah, not. I like the shiny. Did you want to see all of them or, or option two? Um, I think we should just may, maybe start with Joel's applications and go from there. <coughs> just so we can remember. Yeah, perfect. So we'll, we'll just keep rolling through like a slide every five seconds or so. Mm -hmm. And then y'all just jump in if there's any. And I, I will say that I do love the gold. I have looked at getting the current logo printed in gold on black before. Okay. Because gold, it, it, it is just fun, yeah. for sure. Um, and that was another aspect of it. It wasn't necessarily just trying to depart to depart, but right. also to try to build something that looked, stood out. Yeah. Don't have to watch the comparator. Yeah. has a very like almost minimalistic feel mm -hmm. to it which is very big for some people but then I think other people it's not quite as like sure. recognizing and noticing it would be a great would, like off over I, I can imagine my grandmother would hate this right yeah. and there's old people and young bodies I think that are like it's cute um, it is I don't remember it it's a lot it's what I mean yeah and the lights are but there are people who do use like that style and yeah. be all on it. Keep in mind your two primary audiences that are on the brief. So we really take a aim small, miss small approach with right. audiences. Mm -hmm. If you build a brand that's going to make everyone happy, you're going to dilute the brand so much that it's going to actually make no one happy, most likely. But if you really hone in on these college students and those young married couples that are starting families that can be proponents, then I think the chances of attracting a wider audience are probably going to behoove us. As students and young people in Athens are two key audiences, <laughs> <laughs> what do you like that is big? Oh, that's one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, now you get to be on the spot. Sorry. These are our friends. We have a couple of things today, but we have a couple of things today. That's all you have. It's weird that it's a digital now because I've watched the entire process and we've talked about it the entire time. So I don't even know if I have like a like a viable judgment or not on it. Um, I guess I could rule out my favorite thing too. I have to think about that. I didn't expect that question. Really. No, <laughs> I, I think personally, I would agree with why I like JD's the best, specifically because it ties back to um, the corporate cost of business who created the joyful relationship between dog, our humans and dogs, and I think that one conveys that idea the strongest. So if you tie it back to the brand brief, that's what I would I actually, I'm going to piggyback off him and agree that that one is 
my personal favorite, and I think it's because it's such a unique mark, but the system actually lets the dogs shine. Like, you were talking about how it's so minimalistic, mm -hmm. but it's also, I feel, the most relevant with the like current times, and I think if you're gonna do a change, like, come out with a yeah. big. Yeah. Um, I agree. I just, I think it's also extremely flexible in a way that people who maybe are not graphic designers can implement the design in an easy way without maybe butchering it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like, just throwing the hair on an Instagram post is so easy, you're not, it's impossible to mess up. You know what I mean? And it's something that's really cute, it's accessible, and that is such a unique mark across the board um, that it's, it, it's just so engaging and it's so interesting, and I think it would be like, a, I would personally be very proud to call that my mark of my company. Sometimes if it's a hard decision, I like to key up, choose this path if, and I would say for number one, I would say choose that path if you love that idea of a seal over a heart, really taking pride in the organization, choosing something that folks that know our brand are not, it's not going to feel like a big disconnect, specifically if we go with red, it's really not, it's going to feel like a, an evolution, just a step forward into modern day. Um, I would say choose the middle option if you really want to communicate that relationship between dogs and humans. Um, and if you want that system that is kind of playful and for everyone. And then I would say choose the option on the right hand side if you want to come out with something very different. I would say you have the least amount of change on the left hand side and you've got the most amount of change on the right hand side. You don't even have a dog in that mark. Right. That's interesting because everyone else does have a dog. But on the other hand, it is um, it is a lot of change. So that one feels probably the most, um, well, a few of them, they, they all really feel most buttoned up because I actually think the left hand feels very buttoned up as well. Um, but I think it's about what we're looking for. It's not that any of them are, are going to not serve us well. It's just, well, which path do we want to go down? Do we, are, are you wanting us to, like, Take a group of official vote, or I what, think you can you, you can take some time. So typically, we either get a oh, the, it's it is this one, it's number two, you know, like that's and that happens fifty percent of the time. And then I think there are very few chances that it's going to be like nothing resonates. That's normally the brand brief is wrong. Um, and then I think the other half of the time it's oh, we're really torn between these two, or in this instant between these three, and we just don't know. And I think maybe getting some tweaks on number one could help make a more level judgment call because right now there's some easy things we know we want to switch with that one and it seems like two and three we're good with them as they are. Possible to do three and the three fonts. I'm just worried with three that stops <coughs> that as volunteers. I'm good. I don't know what site, but I'm doing yeah. next year. Right. And then that's going to be an issue. I, I thought about that as well. Yeah. Fonts. Sure. Like, we do have so much turnover because it is all volunteers right. that um, I, I could see it becoming a, a problem of trying yeah. to those licenses on the right hand. Right. Yeah, we can totally do that. Yeah, but I think but maybe resonating, like sitting and thinking for a day or two. Yeah. And, then, and I, I don't think it's a, it, I, I agree with you, Bly. It's not a, hey, mass folks, vote. Because they aren't privy to this conversation. They're not privy to the work that went into it or the brand brief. But I think that if you have a couple other board members who weren't here and you're able to let them see the video or let them see the brand brief and make a very educated choice, and then y'all make sure you're, you, whether you decide to vote or however you want to get into alignment, and make sure y'all are all super ecstatic with the one you want to go forward with. I think making a choice right now, this might be a little too soon. Sure, sure. Yeah. And, and I definitely would want the other board members involved in it if sure. we were trying to make a decision. Um, it's a big choice, and there was, a, there was a lot of thought that went into this work. And so I think um, to make a choice off the if it's not coming like a gut reaction of this is it, mm -hmm. I think taking your time to resonate on it, sleep on it, wake up and see when you look at it fresh again tomorrow, when you flip through the deck at your own pace, those are the kind of things that eventually something's going to really hit home, hopefully for the group as a, as a whole. Yeah. Were, were either of the other logos using a paid font? No. Or it was all free? Okay. Yeah, you can use it. Okay. And I think you may have said this, but just to the group overall, I What's on this brand brief? I think they nailed it. Mm -hmm. Like I really, really yeah. think you guys, you, you definitely um, captured the, the essence of. Well, that means a lot to us because you know, we put a lot of research in, but I'm glad that it, it also reflected what mm -hmm. what you guys feel about 
the organization yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I really need the position of senior and I just want to sit here for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's all great, but yeah, that's the big foot right there. Awesome. Well, I think even at, as one of these logos maybe moves into your future, and logos aren't meant to last 100 years. It's amazing if they can, but they most likely won't. You might move past a few logos in the next however many decades, but the brand brief is something that really should last the test of time. That should be the heart and soul behind the organization. And yes, an audience might shift slightly here or there, but overall, and, and yes, you might have new competitors come on the scene and some drop off, but over and above, I think that brand brief will serve y'all well, and that can be a filter for much more than your visual. That can be a filter for how do we communicate with people? What is our customer service like? Do we feel like these things when we're out in events? So you can use the brand attributes and know why you're different in conversations and, and through many other things than just a logo. So I think the team's done a really good job. I'm really proud of them. I, I do branding full time. I'm an adjunct professor and I think that this is amazing work. And so I'm, I'm really glad that this has been available to y'all and that y'all have been available to them so they could get this client, real yeah. client experience. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you for choosing us yeah. in the first place, but just for the work and research and everything that you put into it so like i very much appreciate this yeah. and it when we first met like i, yeah. I told you it could not have come at a better time yeah. and we did yeah. just talked about <laughs> changing yeah. so it was just perfect just right. universe aligning together <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. and I've, I've been in professional on this end of the professional presentation and, and that's the level of quality well, thank y'all for coming. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I did record it. I hope it recorded. <laughs>